Hi there everyone, my name is Ari with Haven Horsemanship and welcome to the first video on saddle fit. So in this video we're going to be talking about overall what to look for when you place a saddle on your horse. I'm talking about saddle balance um, primarily <laughs> and then we'll also be looking at uh, some of the different uh, pommels that Edix in particular offers um, as well as the pad, the shims, the different inlays um, to introduce you to, the, to those. And yeah, we'll see. In uh, the following videos, we'll be showing actually using all of those things to fit the Edix saddle to 10 different horses. It should be fun. The first thing I suggest you look at when looking to see if your saddle fits your horse is look at your saddle on a saddle rack that mimics a horse's back as closely as possible. So one like this, um, where there is some shape to the saddle rack. If you put it just on a fence rail or something, the saddle will not be supported well, so it'll be harder to see the saddle's natural balance. But on a fold-out rack like this, where the outer edges of any sort of uh, tree or padding are supported, uh, will give you a better idea of what the saddle balance is. So as you can see with this saddle, this is the Edix Corville saddle. This is a very nicely balanced saddle, meaning that the pommel, the front of the saddle, and the cantle, the back of the saddle are even. So that is what I'll be looking for when I put the saddle on a horse. I want it to mimic on the horse as closely to this, that same balance. And next we'll talk about a couple of different conformation types of horses overall and how they can cause the saddle to look other than like this, balanced front to back. This is the uphill horse, this is Moose. And what I mean by uphill is that when you look at the top of his withers and the top of his haunches, the top of his withers is higher. What this means when you put the saddle on is odds are what you're going to see is the pommel higher than the cantle or the back of the saddle. This can cause several saddle fitting dilemmas. Uh, one of them being most pommels are not going to accommodate the height of his wither meaning that they may even irritate or sit on the top of his wither. They may also place pressure in inappropriate places further down the slope of his wither between the top of his wither and the top of his shoulder blade. And then lastly, we have the issue of if the saddle is rocked back, that creates balance issues for both the rider and the horse and discomfort for the horse. Next, we have the horse with a dip in their back. It, these horses can be called sway back. There's also a condition called lordosis that can cause this. In this horse's case, he is an older horse. He'll be turning 21 this year. When he came here a few years ago, he had a much more noticeable sway back. So he's been improving as we've been uh, working on strengthening his back and getting him a bit straighter, more balanced. But he does still have this slight dip. What happens when you put a saddle on a horse like this, it can depend on the horse, of course. So in Artie's case, this is Artie, he is quite balanced as far as his, the top of his withers and the top of his haunches. If anything, he might be slightly uphill, uh, but not too much. So when you put the saddle on, the saddle will appear balanced front to back, but that's an illusion because there will be gaps underneath the saddle where the dip in the horse's back is. So we'll be showing a little bit later some ways that you can feel underneath the saddle to make sure there is even pressure on either side of your horse's spine on those, those muscles that you want to have the pressure distributed down. When there are gaps underneath the saddle, you end up with uneven amounts of pressure on the horse's withers and further back on the horse's back near their loin and that can cause sore points. This is the downhill horse, meaning that the top of the withers is actually lower than the top of the haunches. What this causes when you put a saddle on is the pommel is going to be lower than the cantle. That means there's going to be unequal pressure on the horse's withers. It can also cause the back of the saddle to pop up or have inconsistent contact with the horse's back once the girth or cinch is on. It can also cause the saddle to slip back a bit and then the pommel tips forward even more. The pommel tipping forward even more can be caused by a pommel that's a bit too wide. 
I also see it on horses that are just simply downhill and needing some shimming help to keep the saddle oriented the correct way and balanced back to front. Next, I'd like to talk about what I call the flat-backed horses. The shape of a horse's back is, certainly has genetic components. It also has a strong tie to the way that the horse is ridden and its primary type of exercise. So for example, if a horse's primary exercise on a regular basis is being ridden, the weight and shape of a saddle and the rider on their back is going to significantly change the way the horse's back develops. Whereas horses that are moving freely, that whose primary exercise is walking, trotting, cantering, um, you know, moving up and down hill of their own accord without anything on their back, their backs are going to develop very, very differently than the other horses. So the horses here live out 24 seven as a herd. The majority of their exercise is without a person on their back. So a lot of them end up looking like this. This is one of my ponies named Sierra. She has quite a flat back and her back muscles are very, very well developed. She is a little bit naturally downhill. You'll see here her wither and the top of her haunches are about even, uh, which can usually feel like the horse is downhill once you're on them. What I've noticed with the horses here that have developed those very flat backs is they feel even more downhill because most saddles, even treeless saddles, are shaped to a more average sized back, which seems to be the backs of horses whose primary exercise is riding, which again will change the way their backs develop. Fitting a saddle to a flat backed horse is quite the challenge. The problems that I have seen are that there's undue pressure on the horse's withers because the saddle tends to tip forward with the pommel slightly lower than the cantle because of how well developed their back muscles are and are therefore higher than they would be on your average horse. It also can lead to some slipping issues because there isn't as well defined of a shape to their withers or their back for the saddle to uh, conform to. When you first place a saddle on your horse to assess fit, do so without a saddle pad and without putting the girth or cinch on. Place your saddle on just behind the highest point of your horse's shoulder blades um, where their shoulder blades have plenty of room to move. When positioned there, your latigo or your billet should fall a few inches to a full hand's width behind their elbow down below so that their elbow has plenty of room to move. You also want to look at the front of the saddle. Make sure that the middle of your pommel is lined up with the midline of your horse's neck, right where their mane is. And then also look at the back of the saddle and make sure the middle of your cantle is lined up with your horse's spine. You may even need to feel where your horse's spine is and then make sure that the middle of your pommel is lined up with that. And then step back and take a look. What does the balance look like? Does it look like it did on a saddle rack? Are the in this case, the pommel and cantle are quite even, so this saddle looks very well balanced back to front. Okay, now in this case, uh-oh, it isn't balanced back to front. What do you do? We're gonna talk about that a little bit later when we get to the edicts-specific articles and items for how to help better balance your saddle. So hang in there, we'll talk about it a little bit later. We're going to continue on in assessing fit first. Once you have the saddle on, again, without the saddle pad and without the girth and cinch, and you've made sure that it's on the horse straight, you know, evenly left to right, and then also look at the balance back to front. Now look at, does the bottom of the pommel, a lot of treeless saddles have a solid pommel. So does the bottom edge of the pommel underneath the saddle follow your horse's shoulder as shown here? Here I had already fitted the pommel to this horse, Rhea, so the pommel, the bottom of it, is following the angle of her sh shoulder just as I'd like it to. If the bottom of the saddle and the line of your horse's wither, the slope of their wither down towards the top of their shoulder blade do not run parallel like this, then the pommel doesn't fit. If the bottom edge of the bottom of the pommel is cutting in towards the horse's shoulder, that means that the pommel is too narrow. If the top of the bottom of the pommel closer to their wither 
is cutting in towards the horse's wither, then that means that the pommel is too wide. Uh, stay tuned to the next videos where we'll be showing some case studies of fitting the Edict saddle to 10 different horses. And you'll get some visuals of pommels that are too narrow versus too wide versus just right. Next, you want to assess how well the padding on either side of your horse's spine is following your horse's back. So first, I suggest going up to the front of the pommel and just explore, you know, stick uh, your hand down there as far as you can without moving the saddle around and feel on either side. Uh, does the padding seem to be in consistent contact with your horse's back as far as you can feel? Next, I recommend going to the back of your saddle flap and feeling along the back of your flap and up along the back of your saddle and just see, is it there anywhere where you can easily stick your hand up under the saddle all the way up to that muscle alongside your horse's spine? If you can, those are areas where the saddle does not fit appropriately. Next, I'm gonna show a small video clip of me doing these couple of checks, reaching down the channel from the front of the saddle, and then also checking the panels or the padding from just behind the flap. You know, this seems to be following her shoulder pretty well. I can't, I'm kind of hard to see, but I'm sticking my hand down um, the channel here and feeling along her shoulder here. It actually feels like it's sitting pretty well. So again, here's a spot where there is a gap. Reaching up from here, there does feel like there's a little bit of a gap so here's the saddle on a back that looks quite nice and balanced. Um, it's very important to look at both sides. Do the checks down the channel and on the panels on both sides. As you can see on this horse, this side seems to sit nice and flat. I cannot put my hand in there. This is the same horse on the other side, on his right side, and look, I can not put my hand under there very far a little further than the other side but look when i go up there i can easily fit my hand right underneath where i will be sitting on this horse you feel like you are going to fall off his right side and that's why okay so now you have a better idea of how well or hopefully not but possibly poorly your saddle fits your horse now we're gonna look more specifically at Edix saddles and the items that Edix has created that assist with saddle fit. The very first thing that I fit to the horses with the Edix saddles is the pommel. So as you can see here, there are five different pommel sizes. And what they are are different angles that a horse's shoulder between the top of their wither and just behind the top of their shoulder blade could be. So Edix has five of them to choose from. They also have a soft pommel that you can use um, and that I'm actually going to be getting soon so I can experiment and see if some of the horses prefer not having the restriction of an angle of the pommel at all. Once I figured out which pommel will probably best suit the horse, it's time to look at the saddle pad inlays and shimming. Shimming is how you can address imbalances in the saddle due to your horse's conformation. So the saddle inlays are the first three sets on the table. The one furthest to the left is the default, I believe, that comes in the saddle pads. It is called mesh on the website, and it is a thick, springy, bouncy mesh. It was a little bit too much for me. I felt like I was too perched above the horse's back, um, but I'm sure for certain people and for certain horses, it is just the ideal inlay for them. The one in the middle, the set in the middle, is just a thick felt inlay. The set furthest to the right, that's a little bit of a greenish color, is what so far the horses here are liking the best. It is called Polypress on the website. It is a thick, uh, quick rebounding foam. All the way to the right in the picture, the smaller cutouts, those are the shims. And I'm gonna show you a quick video of how the shims go into the saddle pad. And also, I want you to notice the anatomical shape of the shims and the pockets. It is designed specifically to the Edict saddle, so the pad and the saddle work seamlessly together. 
So this is the Edix Corville saddle pad. And I just want to show you um, how it works a little bit. So you put the full size inlays, like a lot of pads, all the way down the inside. So currently I have the polypress uh, insert in there, which is the one that the horses seem to like the most. And then you have these top pockets where you can put in your shims and they hold the shims in place. So you have six pockets for shims. And there's some shims in here, I believe. Yeah, that white felt is our shim. Um, and yes, you have those six pockets that you can specify um, where you want your shims put, um, which really to me is huge. Um, that is, can address so many of the saddle fit issues with a treeless saddle. Um, you know, with a treed saddle, you're limited in that you have that tree there, and um, you can only accommodate so much with the pad. With this much flexibility in the saddle pad, um, you can really fit to a lot of different horses and a lot of different types. So here we are wrapping up our overall saddle fit video. I hope after seeing this video you have a little bit of a better understanding of your horse's overall back shape as well as notice any differences between their two sides like you saw with one horse that had significant differences between his two sides. Related to that and based on that, hopefully now you have a better understanding of how well or not well your saddle fits and maybe even got some ideas of how to better fit your saddle within your limitations or with the saddle you currently have. And then now you have the baseline of knowledge of the edicts items and how they address saddle fit to watch the case study videos that will be coming up. I'll be doing two videos, each with five horses in them, and they'll be showing the initial fitting sessions I had with the horses to fit the Corval saddle to them. So again, it's just one saddle and then the items you were introduced to in this video all being used to fit to 10 different horses. In the future, I hope to do some videos with updates about how I've had a change fit over time for certain horses or simply adjusted the initial fit based on um, certain experiences I had with the horses. So thank you for joining me and I will see you for those case study videos.